All right, guys, today we're talking about an old knife that is so good, it has a cult following. And today we're talking about none other than the Strider SNG. Now, I try to find videos and ways to kind of plug the SNG in on the channel because I feel like when I was growing up, when I was kind of learning about knives, getting excited about uh, blades for EDC, you know, the Strider SNG was one of those knives that was like in my top tier kind of dream status. And uh, it's kind of unfortunate may be fortunate for some people, but the SNG is really, or Strider knives as a whole, I wouldn't say that they aren't popular anymore, but they've really taken a cult-like status to or the people who want to buy these knives. Now, I'm kind of one of those weird anomalies as I'm finding out because, you know, I like a plethora of other knives. And usually when you come across Strider guys that, uh, you know, collect Striders pretty religiously, they pretty much only just have Striders in their collection or certainly a very heavy bias to them. So I'm one of those people that I have a wide plethora of knives from, you know, Benchmade, Hinderer, Chris Reeves, Strider, you know, just the gambit of knives. And I just so happen to really like Striders. So today I thought I would talk about the knife that has a cult following and talk about kind of some of the reasons why this knife isn't as well loved and whether or not you as probably, hopefully, or prospectively a more casual connoisseur of blades might actually want to buy one of these. Okay, so let's talk about why these knives are not as popular as they once were. Now, of course, there are some kind of minutia reasons. There is allegations by the owner uh, or that the owner, you know, was... Um, false claim or claiming false military service and stuff like that. But honestly, a lot of those claims and stuff, uh, you know, they happen to a lot of higher end knife makers and people who are just have more notoriety. So I'm not going to really give that much time, but I think the primary reason why people dislike Striders is they are equally or, you know, close to higher end production knife prices. But these knives, I think a lot of people would consider them to be reasonably unfinished, reasonably crude, and definitely rough around the edges. And one good example of this I can show you guys on this one is, hopefully you guys can see in this lighting, that, you know, the kind of lock bar or the area that the lock bar interfaces on with this knife is very crudely made. And while it is clean you know like the finish work in here is just overall kind of crude and and that kind of leads to not a bad lockup like there's no lock rock on this knife at all you know there's nothing wrong with the lockup but what it kind of leads to is this gritty kind of feeling with the lock bar when you go to like unlock it and once again it doesn't hinder the performance of these knives at all this knife just kind of gives you that rough around the edges kind of feeling now on for Strider, that is actually kind of their thing. Their brand is kind of designed to be this rough around the edges, hard use, you know, designed blade. So the reason why a lot of these knives kind of feel so crude, um, even their fixed blades, you know, it's because that's kind of the way that they are designed or marketed as a brand. And so the people that really love Striders love that kind of, you know, almost made in the back street or back alleyway, you know, kind of approach where these are supposed to be really high quality, really durable, kind of, you know, crudely made knives. Not really crudely made, but they kind of get that appearance. And once again, you know, there's no lock rock on it. This thing is absolutely solid as a rock and uh, is really good. But it is, it, it leaves something for the high-end connoisseur, so to speak, to kind of um, not like. And so there's that. Um, so that's, I think, the primary reason why these knives are no longer as popular as they used to be. Now, another thing that some people dislike is the fact of the use of older materials with these. And what I mean is this is a new production um, strider. You can primarily tell because of the thickness of the blade, but this one is still using S CPM S30V. I think hopefully you guys can see somewhere around there it says S30V. They're still using CTS XHP on their SNGs and it's kind of weird. Uh, their drops are all over the place because some of them use CPM 3V, some use 20CV, some of them use uh, S30V, CTS XHP, and ATS 34. I don't think they've used ATS 34 in a while, but uh, you know, like their drops and steel variations are all over the place. And so some of their blades like this one, you know, are new production that are still using older materials, 
but once again, still $600-ish. This one definitely is a street price of around that $600 mark. And so, you know, you're paying a lot for a blade. You're paying a lot for a blade that, um, you know, is using older materials. Now, to the credit, or once again, kind of the Strider ideology or maybe theology is the fact that, you know, they temper their S30V to be a lower Rockwell hardness and therefore a harder user. So this is gonna be a tougher knife and therefore it's going to be able to withstand more. And so they're using their S30V in a different way that even if they were using things like CPM 3V, 20CV, they're going to be using those blade steels in a different way to achieve uh, goals. So as far as like edge retention goes, you're not going to get excellent edge retention out of any steel coming from Strider because they're not aiming for edge retention they're aiming for overall durability of the steel so other things you will probably see is you know like the fit and finish of the tip you know you can see how this tip is kind of rounded off and it's actually not particularly um, sharp hopefully you guys can kind of catch that on the camera other things you guys could probably see this is not the smoothest knife if you do give it a good hard flick it will flick out but yeah just overall I don't want to say that it's a lack of attention to detail, but these knives really are designed to be hard users. So these knives are purposely not coming with, you know, like super pointed or super fine tips because they are designed for durability. You know, once again, this knife isn't glassy smooth because it's designed for hard use. And so I think the Striders as a whole, uh, whether it's an SMF, whether it's an SNG, um, whether it's a PT, PERT, um, any of the folders that come out of strider you know i think a lot of people dog them for you know low quality but really what it is is i think a lot of people misunderstand strider and that is that these aren't necessarily low quality pieces they're just designed in a very different manner these are designed to be hard use tanky knives that are designed to be abused and i mean you can even tell that once again this is the newer thinner blade stock of steel coming on sngs it used to be the sn or smf um, thickness which was much it still is much thicker than this but uh, even with this thickness of steel I'll pull out another knife for reference here um, pull out another knife for reference here you can see that uh, this is a hinder and you can see that uh, you know this SNG is noticeably thicker than the hinderer and the hinderer in and of itself is not a thin blade at all so you'll see that, you know, really the design and kind of mantra or ideology of Strider is to make it a very tough, very high performance tool for very hard use situations. Whereas a lot of knives like Hinders are going to be more aimed towards high performance in, you know, just an overall fit and finish that is you know, really high quality, really nice, and really enjoyable. Once again, this is really built more for durability, or the SNG is really built more for durability um, as opposed to sheer performance. So that's kind of uh, what I have to say about the SNG and my use case and experience with it. And because of its harder use or its kind of design for harder use, I do usually carry this one outdoors when I'm, you know, adventuring, hiking and stuff because this one is pretty lightweight overall, but definitely is a knife that you can thrash on without any fear. I mean, even this um, coating here is pretty darn wear resistant. And granted, I haven't necessarily hammered this through anything yet, but I heavily doubt that this would actually fail because even though it is a frame lock, it is a really tough, very stout little blade. So that is my experience with Strider. Now, are these things worth collecting? That's a really good question because I think most or kind of the focus of the EDC community has pushed into less of hard use, you know, kind of heavy duty knives, but more into knives that are high performance. And so I think when it comes down to it, most people for EDC are going to like things like Hinders, Chris Reeve, um, Benchmade, stuff like that, where it's designed to be more hard performance and less hard wearing. Um, 
or high performance and less hard wearing. But I think if you are the type of person that really does hard use their knives and or you're the person that wants the kind of eccentric um, ergonomics of the striders, then you really have to go with a strider. I mean, ultimately, you know, are there similarities between something like this hinderer and this strider? Sure, especially in blade shape and kind of maybe the uh, blade performance. But as far as the ergonomics go, there is obviously nothing that looks like a strider smf or smg or pt you know they have this very distinctive almost 1911 styled handle that feels very odd at first but surprisingly comfortable in addition to you really don't see a lot of companies you know with such aggressive texturing now granted this is a double or um, this is a gunner grip and uh, it is incredibly um I almost want to say abrasive, but it is incredibly tacky. And uh, if you even just hold, and even and if you even just hold this knife, you know, even just you know slightly, you're going to lock right into this heavily milled G10. So it is very aggressive, very abrasive, but uh, you know it really does give you that good lock in when you do choose to, you know, like hold the knife and. Uh, you need it to lock in it does so anyways that is kind of the uh, strider smg it really is a unique beast but i really like mine and once again it has secured a spot in the collection forever not only because it is part of what i deem the kind of holy trinity of edc but also because it is you know it is a strider you're not really going to be able to go out and find something like this anywhere else i mean there are collaborations like protech has made auto sngs and auto pts but i mean like as far as the strider goes you can't uh, go anywhere uh, you can't escape or you can't get the same performance or the same kind of ergonomics out of any other knife aside from a strider if you want that strider so anyways that is the strider smg it does really have a cult following strider as a whole in my opinion really has a cult following that is quite strong and quite alive and uh, it's very unique for sure so anyways guys that is the strider smg and it, it is an old knife that has a cult following. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.